March Madness. Exclusively on CBS 11 starting March 15th. Cold case in high definition. CBS Sundays. The CBS Sports Desk is presented by Capital One. Hi, everyone. I'm Greg Gumbel in New York. Welcome to the Capital One CBS Sports Desk. Up next, a college basketball triple header featuring the nation's three top-ranked teams. Most of you will start with number 15, Texas, at number three, Kansas. Others will see UConn against number 10, Georgetown. Then at 2 Eastern, second-ranked UCLA visits Washington. That's followed at 4 Eastern by number one, Ohio State, at Michigan. Last night, the University of Pennsylvania became the first school into the NCAA tournament field of 65. The Quakers captured the Ivy League crown by beating Yale 86-58. Penn coach Glenn Miller with his team after the game. Okay, you guys have been here before many times. Many times in our house, there's no way we we're going to lose this game. That's a great job. NCAA tournament, let's yeah. go! Yeah. Also yesterday in Missouri Valley quarterfinal action, top seed Southern Illinois beat Drake 71-59. Jamal Tatum scored 19. SIU meets Bradley today. Right now it's time for today's CBS Triple Header. Enjoy the games, everyone. The CBS Sports Desk is presented by Capital One. to the Final Four. We join you today from Allen Fieldhouse in Lawrence, Kansas, and action from the Big 12. The Texas Longhorns taking on the Kansas Jayhawks. What's on the line here today as we take a look at the standings? Well, we do know this. The winner here will be the champion in the Big 12 Conference. And the fact of the matter is, Kansas can win it outright with a win. Texas, meanwhile, can get a share of the title if they get a victory. Texas playing well, six straight wins. Iron Eagle along with Jim Spinarkle. This is one of the great atmospheres in all of college basketball. We've got a blockbuster matchup for you here, Jimmy. Maybe the most balanced team in the country, the Kansas Jayhawks, taking on the team that may have the best player in the nation. Kevin Durant has been an absolute phenom. He has been, and just this past Wednesday, he put up another typical huge night with 30 points, 16 rebounds. And the thing about him, and he's really does it down the stretch, too. He had a long three in the regulation, hit two free throws with five seconds left so he did it in the clutch and his team today will have to depend on him to score big time he's established himself as not only the best player as a rookie or a young freshman in this country but one of the best players in the country so it'll be interesting to see how they all react on this floor meanwhile jayhawks are number three in the land maybe they don't have that one go-to guy hasn't hurt them because you just don't know who's going to beat you night in and night out if you play Kansas. Yeah, the word committee comes into play here because they play as a committee. They play at the offensive end, the defensive end. They're very aggressive, and let's make no mistake about it. Just like Texas, they're young, they're talented, but they have this home court advantage here this afternoon. Texas has never won in seven trips into Allen Fieldhouse. Well, at the starting lineup. Opening tip. College basketball here on CBS. CBS Sports College Basketball coverage is sponsored by BizHub from Conica Minolta. It's the hub of your business. Michelob Light, a classic all-malt lager brewed with the finest European hops. Try the taste. And by Chevrolet, an American revolution. Welcome back to Lawrence, Kansas, everybody. Number three team in the country, Kansas, taking on number 15, Texas, in the Big 12 regular season finale. Rick Barnes, the head man with the Longhorns, bringing his squad to yet another NCAA tournament appearance. Let's take a look at the starting lineups. First for Texas, the three-guard alignment, Mason, Abrams, and Augustine. This is the youngest team in the Big 12. Up front, Damian James and all everything Kevin Durant and for Kansas Robinson back at point guard Chalmers and Rush three guard set up front Julian Wright and Sasha Khan rounding out the starting five Bill Self felt like Monday 
might have grounded this team a bit. Kansas had to hold on for a win at Oklahoma, 67 to 65. They have not played since. And today's game being brought to you in HDTV by Harris Corporation, the world leader in broadcast systems for high definition television and mobile media. Steve Olson, David Hall, Kelly Self, the officiating crew. We are ready. Kansas and Texas. Allen Fieldhouse has sold out 16,000 plus. Kansas in their home white. Texas in the burnt orange. And knocked out of bounds. Texas will have it first. These are two teams, Jimmy, that like to get up and down the floor. The two highest scoring teams in the Big 12. They are, and interesting enough, you know, I and their defense has been picking up, and they've been clamping down both of these teams over the last six or seven games. But when we were speaking to both coaches, we asked them, hey, you expect to be a little slower? Nope, they're going to go up and down, and here we go. And James denied on his first attack. Robinson the other way. The balanced attack from Kansas. And they set great screens for one another. They use it off the dribble also. There's right high post on a spin. Julian Wright, who can create mismatches, he's 6'8", 225, can put the ball on the deck and has a bevy of moves on the inside. T.J. Augustine, unable to hit, off the rim. And it's rebounded by Rush. Kansas' leading score at 13.7 points per game. And one thing Rick Barnes wanted to do, he wanted to spend some time early in this game going after the rim. So twice they've tried to attack unsuccessfully. Here's Wright, swatted away by Durant. Out of bounds. Six-game winning streak for Texas, a seven-game winning streak for Kansas. Get it into right, and he flips it in. Well, they spent so much time in practice working on trying to get the interior cuts. That's what they do so well. They have so many guys, Kansas, that can score from that spot on an inbounds pass. How these young Texas players handle this environment will be as big a story as any here this afternoon. Mason. They give James the jumper. Rimming, no. And rebound claimed by Wright for Kansas. Third trip down, no Durant. Robinson, offensive foul. A good step across just then by James to get that position straight up, square up. And it's interesting enough, though, I think right about now might be a good time to call number 35's number a few Texas. Not to run too many at him, not to have him force the shots, but get Durant involved a little bit. We've got a nice matchup here with Wright. Bill Self said, though, that Wright won't be the only guy trying to guard Durant this afternoon. And Durant comes in averaging just under 29 points per game in Big 12 action. That obviously leads the conference. Augustine, penetration. Count it! And a foul. Oh, what a terrific move by Augustine just then. And one of the key things is you're a guard coming through the lane. You want to be thinking always that you can score. But watch how he cuts through the lane, and at the last minute, he's going to come through. Now watch his head look to the right just as he goes in and gets bumped. And at the last moment, he looks to try to put the ball up. So right here, he's looking for contact to get to the free throw line. If you make that, that's just the icing on the cake, a little guy going through the lane. And Sasha Khan is called on the personal foul. Well, Rick Barnes telling us how resilient he believes these freshmen are. They can get down in games, come back, and just keep playing through adversity. They almost don't know where they are and what they're doing, which is a good thing. Just play basketball. Jumper, Chalmers, no. And the rebound to James for Texas. Up ahead, Durant. Durant, count it, a three. You know, I don't think you're supposed to be able to do that that easily. I mean, Wright was right in his face. He jumped right at the right time. Boy, what a terrific start by Durant. Robinson <laughs> swatted away. It's James on the rejection. Here's Durant. And he strokes it for two, an acting job. It was an acting job, and that just shows you how seasoned Durant is. I would bet you 95% of the guys in this country coming down the floor 
Big versus Little would have run over the little guy. Terrific stop by Durant and a better shot. There's Khan down low, and he draws the foul against James. An 8 nothing Texas run. I'll tell you what, though, Ian, for people who have not seen Durant play as of yet, and it's late in the season, watch this. Hand in his face, he goes right over it. Boom, he can shoot that ball. And then watch the decision here. He stops, doesn't run over the player, and then a little turnaround from about 12 feet away. He's got all the pack, the tools in the package, that's for sure. At the line, Sasha Khan shooting it at 50% on the season. It's quiet in here for free throws, huh? <laughs> I can't hear you. What? <laughs> Sharon Collins will check in for Kansas. And he replaces Russell Robinson, so talented freshman Collins from Chicago. Khan puts an end to the 8-0 run. And now another freshman, Darrell Arthur, will check in. Two McDonald's All-Americans stepping in for Bill Self. So Collins will match up with Augustine. And Arthur will check Damian James. Yeah, it starts with a 1-2-2 full court. Good decision not to shoot there by James. Augustine, corner. And rebound is grabbed by Wright for Kansas. Put him handle the ball. Now he's got to put a little pressure on Durant. Guys, hands by Durant, though, defensively. And numbers developing. Augustine with a three on two. Look out! Kevin Durant with the big finish. You know, Durant gets so much of the attention, and rightfully so, for this Texas team. But let's not forget about Augustine. We've seen him drive to the basket already. Just then coming down the floor, a three-on-one, but two of them were behind him. Great understanding and recognition. I think Durant let him know it, too, by yelling to him. And Collins loses the ball. Augustine picks his pocket. Texas in transition. Good find on the perimeter. Abrams side rim. And rebound knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Texas. Uh, defensively, take a look at Durant, the long arms, and then down the floor. And right about halfway down the floor, Durant yells from him from behind to let him know that he's on his hip coming right behind him. Terrific recognition by Augustine also. Durant, three for three from the field, seven points, and a 10-6 Texas lead. They'll spread the floor, rush, looking to get involved offensively. Texas will not be guarding that high post as much. Good dish on a kick out. Rush loses it. And turnover, Kansas. So Kansas got off to the quick start. Texas has answered. We'll step aside from Lawrence. AT&T and Singular Wireless are proud to present this great NCAA championship moment. A lot past the man. Get more historic NCAA tournament highlights and exclusive video of the 2007 Men's and Women's NCAA Basketball Championship on your mobile phone. Available only on your AT&T or Singular wireless phone. Singular is now the new AT&T. Longhorns with a 10-6 lead. This Kansas team has lived up to its preseason hype. Ranked number three in the nation when this season started. Little dip, but... As hot as anyone right now with seven consecutive wins and dominating teams. In six of those seven games, they were winning by an average of 27 points per game. But then, at Oklahoma on Monday night, Bill Self's team got a scare. 67-65 win for Kansas. But, as Self described to us yesterday when we attended practice, might have been a bit humbling for this Kansas squad. And they put together that 9-4 to four run down the stretch, which worked in their favor also. But you're right, I think it may have brought them back to earth a little bit to get ready for this game here. And he's actually moving out front. Connor Atchley, who just checked into the game, the sophomore from Clear Lake, Texas, called on the moving screen. So the first turnover of the day for Texas. And Kansas has turned it over four times. Texas comes in at 22 and 7. There's still a possibility of a three-way tie for the Big 12 title. That would be the first time in the conference's 11-year history. Jump shot doesn't go for Julian Wright. And here comes Abrams the other way for Texas. Texas A&M later on will take on Missouri, and the Aggies still have a shot at a share of the Big 12 regular season championship. 
Going away from Durant a little bit. Here they come. They're coming back the right side. And Durant, tough, using the window. Four for four to start his afternoon off, and we've seen a variety of moves already, but that was beautifully designed there by Augustine. Hey, let's get him back involved, get him his touches. A good hold there by Rush. Kick out. Arthur, soft touch, doesn't go. Rebounded inside, Rush, that won't go. And controlled by Atchley. Kansas can't buy one. They'll dump it down to Durant. And misses on the turnaround. Down the lane, right gives it up. And up there for the easy dupes. Well, that's why this team, Kansas, is so good. They're so unselfish with their balanced scoring attack. With, you know, four guys in doubles, a couple of guys right below that. They pass the ball, and they love to kind of attack off the dribble. Wide open. Bottom for three. Kevin Durant on target. He's got 12 points. We are just about six minutes in. And relatively, I don't mean to diminish, diminish the defensive effort there, but they're relatively easy so far. He's getting his good looks really in the flow, and he's comfortable on the floor. Collins, try the entry pass. Arthur, and it's rebounded by Durant, who comes in averaging 11 and a half boards per game. Augustine. How did he find the opening? Mason's open and nails it. A triple. I'll tell you, you know how he found the opening eye? He, he's willing to put the ball on the floor and protect it. One extra dribble until something creates for Rick Barnes' team. And these guys understand that. When you have a good point guard who knows how to handle the basketball, his assist to turnover ratio, Augustine, is terrific. So what happens as a teammate, you understand that he's going to find you. Just be patient. He will eventually get it to you. Right now, let's take a look at our Applebee's neighborhood favorite. 1988, Danny Manning led the Kansas Jayhawks to their second ever NCAA championship, a win over Oklahoma. Manning finished the game with 31 points, 18 rebounds, and five steals, earning the tournament's most outstanding player award. And Danny, part of Bill Self's staff, the director of student athlete development. He's big in Lawrence, Kansas. Can't walk around this town without drawing a crowd. A Jayhawk legend indeed. Look at the total points, nearly 3,000 in his Kansas career. And that's just a huge number right there. I mean, the rebounds, uh, he was a terrific college player, you know, in terms of had the problems with his, uh, his legs, his knees started to give away on him. But boy, you, know, you, you knock on the door of 3,000 points, that's all you need to say. And he was asked yesterday about Kevin Durant and how Durant compares to him. He says, well, Kevin's better. <laughs> he's, he's not bad. Nice entry pass there, Arthur. And he draws the foul. So after the timeout, Kansas able to get a couple of free throws. Danny Manning, certainly his work with the Kansas big men has paid off. And we know this Texas big man has been dominant from the very start. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure Danny Manning's happy to be watching this guy and not trying to defend him. But we've seen a variety of moves with Durant already. Darrell Arthur, a 66% shooter at the line. Dallas, Texas native. And Durant getting a breather. I'm not getting the sense that the freshmen right now from Texas are intimidated by this setting. Uh, I'm getting the same exact feel. They've come in, and one of the things you hope for is a, uh, a team coming into a, a place like this against a ranked team number three is that you get to off to a good start. Good work to get this offensive rebound. And they got off to that good start. So off the two misses from Arthur, Kansas does control. Open look, goes down Russell Robinson. He shoots it at 29%, the Bronx, New York native from three-point range. But he nails that one to give Kansas a shot in the arm. And that was a nice slide away from the, uh, from the point there. You find the spot on the floor, you flare and float and catch it and go at the same time with the jumper. Abrams, open look, rebound, bounces off the head of Winder. And he's got it for Texas. So Craig Winder, the lone senior on this Longhorn squad. What's he doing out there? <laughs> he didn't get the memo. He's an old guy. <laughs> and knocked out of bounds. It'll be Kansas ball. You know, in fact, Jimmy, this is supposed to be senior day here That's in right. Kansas, but you look at their roster, Really, the only guy in here that would be close to a senior is you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm having a senior moment. <laughs> I'm going to forget you said that. 
18-11. Texas. We come up on 12 minutes to play in this first oh. half. Collins makes a mistake. Off the dribble, he turns it over. Abrams on a cross. Oh! Coming back to make the play rush. And Jackson by himself for the slam. And at both ends of the floor, they get a lift. And they give a lift to this crowd. Defensively, everybody likes the block shot. And what do you get out of it? You get a snowbird down the other end. The fans are waking up again. 18-13, Augustine. Oh. And a rejection for Arthur. Numbers, rush, the flush. You may have to rush to a timeout right now if you're Rick Barnes, or at least you better start thinking about one. It's a 7-0 Jayhawk run. That's what their balance does to I. They defensively, they lock you down. They help one another out. Kansas, terrific work. Second guy in blocking shots, and then it's off to the races. And this field house is electrified. Now, this will tell you about the poise of Texas right now. After a little flurry against them, let's see what they come up with. Augustine. Can he be the calming influence? Wham. No. Foul oh. called. That Arthur is. got him clean. But a personal yeah. foul assessed. Yeah, it had to be down below because that was a clean block. We'll have Texas free throws coming up. Kansas a little jump in their step here, first half. Kansas has cut the deficit to three, 11-14 mark, first half. And near the end of today's game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team to honor their determination and outstanding play. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. America's brand supports America's best, Chevy. An American Revolution. Kevin Durant is back on the floor, but with him on the bench, Kansas is able to go on a 7-0 run. Well, he averaged about 35 minutes per game. Now, once again, they've played four overtime, so those numbers are a little skewed, so it might be in the 33, 32 range, but today I think he's going to have to log some big-time minutes. DJ Augustine, if he was playing for any other team in the country, Everybody would be talking about the freshman season that Augustine has put together. He just happens to be playing on a team with a freshman that very well could win National Player of the Year honors with Kevin Durant. But that's how good Augustine has been. And, and I think to give him credit, he's tempered his game a little bit to know that, hey, if Durant's on the team and he's that good, I'll make sure I go for the ride with him. I'll help, obviously, and be a consist consistent player all season long as he has been. Augustine leading the Big 12 in assists, 6.7 per game. Robinson puts it on the deck. Just over nine minutes gone by in this first half. 20 to 15, Texas. Collins lines it up. Way off on a three. And it's rebounded by Winder. Comes that high pick and roll. Augustine and Durant, he's going to move away from it. And Durant is being matched up with another freshman, Darrell Arthur. Goes from a high look to an isolation. And Durant, the leaner. Rebound, James trying to save. Knocked up in the air and claimed by Collins. Kansas is running. Collins on the attack. And a foul called. Now, one of the things about Collins on the scouting report is that he's just flat out explosive. And right there from about 20 feet away, did he ever make up a lot of ground? Now coming up tomorrow on CBS, an unwed mother who was sent away discovers a secret and never comes back. Don't miss a new episode of Cold Case. That's tomorrow on CBS. Watch for this little action going towards the basket if they can. Oh, big hands by Durant. Does he have a long? No, well, Kevin Durant doesn't even allow the inbounds pass to get into play. As Collins is trying to look around this mountain of a man. 5-11 going against 6-9, but the wingspan of Durant could skip past. Ball movement, ball fake, right. And slam. Well, Julian Wright getting upstairs. It does not get any better than that. If you like to watch fundamentally sound players use a simple ball fake, boy, did he ever get the elevation at the defensive end and take advantage of it. 20-17, to Texas in front. Here's Durant, sizing up right, a three, book it. <laughs> he is six of eight from the field, 15 points for Kevin Durant. Knocked out of bounds off of Texas. You know, here comes a little movement without the basketball right. 
going to find himself open. Now watch the turn and the ball fake. Boom, James is gone. Finish. Easy one. Kansas makes a change. Collins will sit down. Sasha Khan has checked in. Durant is 6 of 8, as mentioned. His teammates right now are 2 of 10. Chalmers, he's looking to get involved. And a three. One of the first looks defensively, Texas throws his own. And good patience and recognition by Kansas and the perimeter players. Now look at the handle right there. Off balance, Augustine stays with it. Augustine on a cross. And squirts away. Stolen by Chalmers, who leads the Big 12 in that category. Rush steps into it. Can't hit the three. Long rebound right. Extra pass. Robinson rims out. Foul call. Oh, that's Durant on the baseline just then. Real good attack by Kansas once again. They start at the defensive end. They make things happen. Look at how many white jerseys starts. To, they find the middle of the floor defensively. And then notice Durant coming over now to the right. But watch the body. You have to lead in this situation where you catch it that quickly, that close to the basket. Lead with your body. Same thing we saw Augustine do down the other end of the floor. First personal on Kevin Durant. 15 foul against Texas. And another free throw coming. Matt Hill checks in for Texas. He has missed the last 11 games with a left foot injury. He's a freshman out of Lincoln, Nebraska. So good news for Texas when the medical staff cleared Hill yesterday for action this afternoon. And Robinson at the free throw line, a 66% shooter. A quiet leader on this team. But a suffocating defender. And he draws Augustine on the other end. One point game. Durant calling for the ball against Rush. Khan ranges over to help. Here's Durant in traffic. The thing that makes him so good, I mean, he's so efficient with the basketball, but those long arms, he positions his body so well to understand when he can get his shot off with the length of his arms. It's just terrific for a young kid. 17 for Durant. Khan, pump. Khan, no good. And rebounded by Augustine. Good find. Abrams a three. Buries it. That's more of an old traditional fast break there where you think the guys are coming down, but then the new game steps in where guys flared at a three rather than going all the way to the basket for the layup. Abrams shoots it at 43% from beyond the arc. Texas is 5 of 7 from long range. Rush is off the mark from deep. Even though he's missed his last two, you can tell with Rush, he feels good about shooting the ball. Yesterday, he was shooting it smoothly. Durant. Bottom! <laughs> a bomb for three! Kevin Durant is in the zone! He sure is. You talk about being comfortable shooting the basketball. 7-9 for 17. Durant has 20 points on 4 of 4 from three-point territory. One twenty-two, Texas in front. You can run your brackets online for free with Bracket Manager on CBS Sportsline. Invite your friends, fill out a bracket, and let Bracket Manager do the rest. Sign up right now at cbssportsline.com slash brackets. Kevin Durant. The confidence that he is showing his first ever trip inside Allen Fieldhouse. One of the toughest environments to play in in college basketball. He is at the center of an 8-0 Texas run. Off the timeout. Right. Julian Wright. Multifaceted performer. Very versatile. Actually played some point guard back in high school at Homewood Flosmore in Chicago Heights, Illinois. Eight points for him. Uh, scoring better in the last three out of four games. Double figure points. So a guy who's a factor and one of the guys that they like to see loosen it up a bit offensively. Augustine nails it. A three. Well, they're shooting right through the Kansas defense and shooting right through this Kansas crowd. Eight points now for the freshman Augustine, and Texas is lights out from long range. Mason trying to defend Rush out along the baseline. And a foul call. Texas is now seven of nine from three-point territory. They've got the lead on the road. Ah! 
And back here in Lawrence, Kansas, the game summary, Texas equaling its largest lead of the day, 34 to 24, and Durant has been simply spectacular. Welcome back, Ian Eagle, along with Jim Spinarkle and talking to Bill Self yesterday. The Kansas game plan, if they could hold Kevin Durant to 20, what a victory right. that would be. I don't know if he bargained on holding him to 20 within the first 13 minutes of the game, Jimmy. I don't think he bargained for that either. I mean, he's going to keep running different guys at it, but I think there are two points to make. Number one was we were fortunate enough to watch Durant earlier in the year when he played and lost to Villanova. And the second half, he really didn't play well at all. But you knew, that, obviously, that he had the talents to do different things. The other part of it is here that's really remarkable to me is He's stacked up big numbers all season long in the conference, outside the conference. They knew who he was coming in, so it's not like some new kid off the block, even though he's a youngster. And he, boom, he blasts away for 20 early points. And he's getting help. D.J. Augustine has eight points and six assists. Chalmers breaking down the defense. Open look, Robinson rims out on a three. Long rebound to Augustine. Texas is running. Augustine attacking. Oh, he gets the roll. D.J. Augustine going to the hoop. Boy, are his decisions so good, and you have to give credit to, for, to Durant just then for running the floor to make an angle appear. Back in their zone with Durant at the point, it's hard to look over for small guards to look into the post when a 6'9 guy with a huge length of arms is out there deflecting. And this crowd has been taken out of it at the 6'15 mark of the first half. Texas has made its last six shots from the field. Spreading the floor. Shot clock winding down. Here's Rush. A three. Book it. Uh, that'll bring him back a little bit. What you have to do, though, Ian, as a team, it's easier to weather storms on your home floor. So they have to just si really tighten up the defense a little bit and use these next six minutes or so to just kind of gradually get themselves some rhythm at the offensive end of the floor. Brandon Rush, who was the Big 12 freshman of the year last year, of course, Durant will win the award this year. Augustine will finish second. And Bill Self just then made a decision to run two guys immediately at Durant to get him to release the ball. He did, and they paid the price for it because Augustine was just wide open. Another three for Texas and seven straight makes for the Longhorns. Against this zone look, Chalmers will shoot over him. And connects. Mario Chalmers from long range. It's like hitting the tree in a golf game on your home course and getting that ball to end up on the green for you. That's a little home cook in there with the rims working in his favor. Both teams shooting it well from long range. Texas nice better one. than that. Hill can finish well, on the interior. Boy, I, I tell you, we're seeing just great play by Durant and his teammates. Releasing out of the double team there, making a terrific baseline pass. And important for Hill to feel like he was involved after all that inactivity because of the foot injury. Robinson, open look. Both teams are cooking on the offensive end. Yeah, this is what the marquee value was going up and down. Whoa, what a... A flat down as Augustine loses the ball, but Texas will retain it. Yeah, take a look at Durant. Now watch, he's going to flip this ball right to the baseline. And all you have to do is be ready to catch it and go if you're Matt Hill. So Hill will take a seat for Texas, and James returns for the Longhorns, who lead it 41 to 33. They are shooting 58% from the field, 80% from three-point right. Corner, Abrams, got it again! A.J. Abrams with a three. That is nine makes in a row for Texas. Not only is the shooting impressive, but just the level of patience, the comfort level that Texas has going at the offensive end. Arthur gets a touch, but too strong on the jump hook with Durant there defensively. Texas gets into its offense with Mason. Picked up by Collins. Small guy now guarding Durant. They're going to have to really help out down on the blocks with Stewart down there on him. Drive and layup goes for Damian James. Some of the players thought there was a whistle for a moment. It did sound like there was, and a couple of guys froze. That's 10 in a row now for Texas. Chalmers. Tough angle. The leaner goes down. Kansas is getting a little more rhythm at the offensive end, though. They're still in a bit of a hole right here, but they're mixing it up. They're hitting a couple of their outside shots. 
but I think they have to continually look at the paint area and try to continue to condense the court, bring it to the basket. Abrams. Oh, they're smoking hot. <laughs> A.J. Abrams from the other corner. 11 straight from the field for Texas. And the Big 12 leader in threes made in a little over three per game. We're getting a show here this afternoon is shooting the basketball. Chalmers using the screen, an offensive foul. Fans react. 49-35, Texas has its largest lead of the day. A.J. Abrams can't miss from long range. You're watching NCAA College Basketball on CBS. So who's been kidnapped? What? Oh, my no, God. No. no. A new without a trace CBS Sunday. Catch every game of the first three rounds in their entirety with Mega March Madness as Direct TV supplements CBS's coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship. Get more historic NCAA tournament highlights and exclusive video of the 2007 Men's and Women's NCAA Basketball Championship on your mobile phone, available only on your AT&T or singular wireless phone. Singular is now the new AT&T. Texas, they shoot threes at a 40% clip. They are 10 of 12 here today. And the way they're doing things, I mean, it's just really spreading the floor very well. I mean, their 2007 number right there at 40 percent, as you touched on, that could set a single school record for them. And 10 for 12 isn't going to hurt that average so far. Here's another number, Jimmy. Kansas allows 59.9 points per game. Texas has 49 points against this Kansas team with 248 to go in the first half. Here comes the lob. Look out. Durant catch and release for two. Rick Barnes give him credit for designing that play or at least calling it. The play probably wasn't designed that moment, but nice little decision there. Durant coming up, fakes up high, and then go right back door for the lob. 22 for Durant. 11 straight field goals for Texas. That one is off the mark from right. And now Texas can extend the lead. They're up by 16 on the number three team in the country. We'll see what the double team comes. They're going to look at him. Durant comes up short. And a foul called Mason will get charged with it. And that is number seven, one and one situation for Kansas. And we go upstairs with Durant. Nice little design play there to come up, fake people out, and then you get a switch with the smaller guy, Collins, hoping to help out. He was trying to ride him away into the corner, but it's not going to work with a 6'9 guy with that kind of talent. The Texas freshman, Durant and Augustine combining, and then the sophomore, the old guy, A.J. Abrams, <laughs> helping out from the perimeter. This is one of the youngest teams in the country. It is the youngest team in the Big 12. The second youngest team in the Big 12, Kansas. One and one for Brandon Rush. Coming up, AT&T at the half. Greg Gumbel and Seth Davis have all the scores and highlights, plus the latest tournament news and an AT&T Naismith watch update. That's all coming up on AT&T at the half. Brandon Rush nails a pair, a 68% shooter. Seven points for him. And it's 51-37, Texas. And they don't look rattled at the offensive end, and Kansas has to come up with a couple of stops here. Durant. Winder couldn't catch it cleanly. They'll reset under two minutes to go. First half, Augustine the drive. Lays it in and out. And a foul called on his way to the goal. I mean, that's going to be way out front. That was on Julian Wright. And it will be Wright picking up the personal. Kansas still had a foul or two to give. That's team foul number five for KU. James, aggressive move. Good help. Chalmers knocked it free from the backside. Collins finds Chalmers a three. Mario Chalmers. Yeah, that's what they need. They need to get a couple of stops, come down, and make sure they make good decisions. Well done just then by Collins running the traffic. Oh, man. Durant. <laughs> Straight away three. Kevin Durant. 
He is special. Well, that baby was a long stroke. 25, including five of five from three-point range. Rush gives it up and a turnover. Winder gets it into the hands of Augustine as we will hit the one-minute mark of this first half. 54 to 40, Longhorns. Augustine against Rush. Augustine, and it's out of bounds off of Kansas. 21 seconds remain on the shot clock as Chalmers will retie the right sneaker. And a timeout call. Texas is shooting 61% from the field. 11 of 13 from three-point land. Durant, his range is limitless. Tomorrow on CBS, a whitewater challenge takes the game to the highest level of danger yet. A new Amazing Race All-Stars, that's tomorrow on CBS. The Kansas Jayhawks have won 23 straight home finales, but they've never seen a freshman like this come into their arena, Kevin Durant. Off the mark, Abrams. Chalmers runs and spins it in. Mario Chalmers. Oh, the smarts of Chalmers just then, too. He was trying to bait Kevin Durant into fouling him, which would have been a big play if he could have gotten it. And somehow gets that little whirly dirly flip shot to go in on the drive. Chalmers is the high man for Kansas with 13. There's a seven-second difference. Shot clock the game clock. Augustine. Durant the jumper. No. And Kansas can hold for one. And if they run into a problem here with the miss, if Texas gets it and tries to go the other way, they have a foul to give. So Kansas in the driver's seat right now with 10 to go. There's Collins, takes the opening. <laughs> Left hand, no. Knocked outside, Augustine. Three seconds, two seconds, gets it up. Abrams at the horn. It's short. And one half of play complete in Lawrence. Texas has put 54 on the board against the Jayhawks. Kevin Durant, 25 points, five of five from three-point range. 54-42, Texas leading Kansas. Right now, let's go to Greg Gumbel in New York. Thanks, guys. Coming up on AT&T at the half. Today's scores and highlights, and Seth Davis will give us the latest on the tournament after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports presents AT&T at the half. Singular is now the new AT&T. And welcome back, everyone, to AT&T at the half. It is time for a segment we like to call Seth's Final Four, because for every question we ask, Seth is going to give us his list of four. You ready? I'm in the wheel. I must be ready. All right. Seth, who's going to be the Final Four at-large teams invited to the tournament? My last four in. I'm going to start with Creighton out of the Missouri Valley. I think they're pretty safe. Certainly uh, one more win would do it. Uh, also... Old Dominion in the Colonial. A lot of bubble teams, Greg, rooting for Old Dominion to win that league tournament because they are strong for an at-large bid. Missouri State could certainly seal the deal if they beat Creighton. And good news, uh, that's for, uh, Purdue is my last team in the field right now. Although if one of these uh, uh, mid-major teams lose, like a Gonzaga, Winthrop, or Butler, uh, that would take away an at-large bid that could potentially go to Purdue. Right now, today, they're in. All right, next up, name the best four teams that will be left out of the tournament field of 65. Let's start in the Mountain West with San Diego State. Uh, they've beaten some good teams, but they've all been at home, so they do have some work to do. Same thing with Alabama and that horrible SEC Western Division. I think DePaul is actually in pretty good shape, mostly because of the win over Kansas. No room for error on uh, their uh, front. And Florida State got a big lift today. Their point guard, Tony Douglas, is back. They lost a lot of games without him. If they can prove that they're good with Tony Douglas again, I think Florida State's going to get there. All right. Up next, give us your final four bracket busters, the sleeper teams that wreak havoc in the tournament. All right. These are teams you do not want to play uh, in the tournament. We're going to start with Old Dominion. Uh, they've won 11 in a row heading into the tournament. They are very hot. Uh, as is Xavier, by the way. Xavier is the only team in the Atlantic 10 who has a chance uh, to get an at-large bid. I gave you Winthrop. And also, who's playing better right now than Maryland? They've won six in a row, including two over Duke. A big comeback over North Carolina. The Terps are hot. Yeah, they are hot. All right, now, list the four number one seeds in this year's NCAA tournament. It's, for this week, It's anyway. been a wild week uh, for the number one seeds. I'm going to leave Wisconsin in there. Certainly, they're going to need to
to beat Michigan State today. Kansas is looking pretty good, but they're going to need to beat Texas, probably also win the Big 12 tournament. Ohio State looking pretty comfortable out of the Big 10, and UCLA is your number one overall seed in the tournament right now. Of course, everything can change. All right, now, name the final four teams that will make it down the We'll Atlanta. actually get there, yeah. and I get to change my mind sure, depending on when the brackets come out. But I am going to start with Kansas. They were my preseason pick to win it all, so I'm back on their bandwagon. And I do love Texas A&M. They're playing terrific basketball right now. Great defense. Obviously, A.C. Law is as hot as they come. Florida, I think, Greg, they're going to get it back together. And I do think that UCLA is going to make it back to the Final Four. Maybe those two will meet up on Monday night again. All right, Seth. Uh, we will, as always, follow your answers away in the video <laughs> vault. Sure you will. And uh, see how they look when we review them at the end of the month. AT&T at the half will continue in a moment. place as big as it is diverse. Maybe that's why we're so single-minded in our purpose, to help transform individuals into the thinkers, dreamers, and leaders of tomorrow. We're Texas. What starts here changes the world. Everyone, I'm Greg Gumbel. Welcome back to AT&T at the half. After 20 minutes of play in Lawrence, Texas, all over the Jayhawks, 54-42. I'm joined, as always, by Seth Davis of Sports Illustrated. Let's go right to the scoreboard and look at this Texas-Kansas matchup. Kansas looking to win the Big 12 title outright. There's a guy named Durant in their way. Durant never heard of him, Greg, until 25 points in the first half. It's all Kansas can do to stay close uh, with the Longhorns. This is another pretty good freshman, Sherrod Collins, beating Brandon Rush. But obviously, Kevin Durant, if there's any question who your national player of the year is this 20 minutes of basketball has certainly ended ended it there uh, texas obviously needs to close out a win but i really think if kansas loses this game i just told you they were a one seed i think they'd go down to a two remember kansas did not have to play at texas or at texas a&m during big 12 play so their body of work really doesn't give them a strong footing in terms of a number one seed of course it depends what everybody else does but this loss would really hurt kansas they're there if they keep winning if they keep winning, but it depends what everybody else does. In the Big East, everything you, depends. Everything UConn depends. at Georgetown, the turnover. Jerome Dyson lays it in. Georgetown looking to clinch at least a share of the Big East regular season title today. Yeah, Georgetown, one of the hottest teams in America right now. They've won 11 of their last 12 games, largely because of that. Boy, Roy Hibbert uh, has 11 points and eight rebounds in the first half. This is going to be Jonathan Wallace with the three-pointer. I think Georgetown right now safely as a two-seed, even if they don't win the Big East tournament, Greg, I think a very good chance at getting a two-seed if they get to the final. Hoyas with a four-point lead at halftime in the Big Ten at Madison. The Badgers hosting Michigan State, and uh, Madison is Orlando Tucker land. It certainly is. Wisconsin's so tough to beat at home. Remember, Michigan State did beat them in East Lansing a couple weeks ago. That's going to be Goran Sutan with the layup, but Orlando Tucker, uh, clearly your Big Ten player of the year, and Wisconsin trying to hold on to their number one seed would be a little bit easier if Kansas does not back go down. Badgers have lost two in a row looking to right the ship. In the ACC, Florida State at Miami to play the Hurricanes. Keaton Copeland, nice pass here to Brian Asbury for the layup. Yeah, I mentioned in a little Final Four game uh, there, Greg, that Tony Douglas did return today for Florida State, but guess what? He had zero points in the first half. That was Jason Rich on the alley-oop and Jack McClinton answering for Miami. If Florida State loses this game, no chance for an at-large pick. And in the Big Ten, Illinois against the Iowa Hawkeyes. Hawkeyes play well at home. They won 31 of their last 33. Adam Haluska. 
way up top for the three. Yeah, unfortunately, all those wins have basically come at home, which is why I don't think Iowa is going to the tournament. As of now, Illinois' uh, Rich McBride uh, dropping in that bucket, and this is going to be Haluska again with the layup. Illinois pretty safe as an at-large, but certainly winning at Iowa would give them some much-needed breathing room heading into the Big Ten tournament. Illinois with a one-point lead on Iowa at halftime. Coming up in the second game of our CBS Saturday triple header, second-ranked UCLA versus Washington in a Pac-10 clash. Set the Bruins led by Aaron Aflalo, the subject of our Naismith watch. What a, by what a terrific year he's having, Greg. He came back to school after putting his name in the NBA draft. He's second in the Pac-10 in scoring. Terrific defense along with his backcourt mate Darren Collison. And you can be sure when UCLA needs a basket in the clutch, Aaron O'Flalo's taking the shot. All right, you can text the word VOTE to 87654 on your AT&T or singular wireless phone to register. Voting for the Naismith Trophy winner will begin when four finalists are announced on March 18th. For more information, go to cbs.sportsline.com. Thanks for joining us on AT&T at the half. We'll get you back out to Ian and Jim for the second half of Texas and Kansas after this. CBS Sports presents AT&T at the half. Singular is now the new AT&T. CBS Sports College Basketball coverage is sponsored by Applebee's Neighborhood Grill and Bar. Eating good in the neighborhood, Applebee's. State Farm, great service, great rates. It's all here. Nobody takes care of you like State Farm. And powered by Pontiac, official performance machines of the NCAA. One of the great venues in all of college basketball, Allen Fieldhouse, but it's number 15, Texas, in front of number three, Kansas, 54-42. Welcome back courtside, everybody. Ian Eagle along with Jim Spinarco. Kansas is not accustomed to having a team come into their arena and put up the kind of offensive numbers that we saw Texas put up in that first half. Uh, simply miraculous. It was, and, and the ease of it, I thought, too, the composure that Texas showed right from the beginning. They warmed it up. Kevin Durant was just marvelous, and Augustine running the show. A terrific combination of two young players. Well, now let's take a look at the Applebee's first half stats. The fact of the matter is Kansas shot 50% from the floor in their own arena and are still down by double figures. That's because Texas went 11 of 14 from three-point range. Kevin Durant has been the story. Not only his ability to score, but his ability to get his other teammates involved passing out of the double team. Yeah, that and running the floor, a couple of deflections at the defensive end, the long-range shooting, and the 5 for 5 from long range. As you take a look, we got a little shot chart for you right here. Take a look at where he's made those five around the perimeter right across here. And look where he's also missed his shots, his right side of the floor. So obviously all his shots coming from the middle of the floor or to the right. Maybe got to bump him to the left side of the floor and see how he does on that side. I don't actually believe that <laughs> Kansas gets the shot chart like we do. <laughs> well, they pay attention to it if they're scouting, though. 54-42. Texas in front, largest deficit at the half for Kansas. This season, five against Oral Roberts, which was a loss. Sasha Khan getting the scoring started for Kansas in this second half. If you're Kansas on your own floor, you want the first five minutes of this second half to be tight, put it down on the blocks just like they tried to, get to the free throw line, stop the clock a little bit, make some free throws or inside buckets. Here's Durant, way outside. Bullet feed is intercepted. Chalmers that time defensively with a good extension. Right. Good step around Durant for the bucket. And Phil Self really trying to wake his team up, I'm sure, at half just ends it. Guys, if you really are the number three team in the country right now, go out and prove it in this first five minutes to get yourselves back in this game. 54-46. to 46. Kansas has their sights set on a number one seed in the NCAA tournament. That's knocked out of bounds. And Texas will retain. A victory here would propel them into the Big 12 regular season championship in the number one seed in the conference tournament. It's an 11-3 run bridging the first and second half for Kansas. James is fouled. With a strong move to the hoop. Big 12 standings, the top five, Kansas at 13 and two. Texas with a win would take a share of the Big 12 championship and then Texas A&M later meets Missouri. And with the Kansas loss, Texas A&M will have a shot at a share of the title. Damian James, 60% shooter, a freshman. Multi-dimensional talent. 
at 6'7", 227. He can play anywhere on the floor. And he's coming off his career high. 22 points in that win over Texas A&M. Double overtime victory on Wednesday night. They did not practice on Thursday. They got in late here in Lawrence last night. Had a bit of a walkthrough. Didn't do much. As Rick Barnes tried to keep his team fresh for this matchup. Nice catch. And Khan with a chance for three. And it's Julian Wright who made it happen. He sure did. A beautiful strip around the corner there. Watch Wright come around this little high screen there and gets one right in the gut of Khan. Here it comes. Bang. Watch him. He almost has to defend himself to catch it. Get the hands ready. Get them out there. But somehow he somehow gets it. And yeah, Bill Self really likes the way his first two minutes are shaping up in the second half here. So the perfect setup by Wright. Khan at the line. And he completes the three-point play. The junior from Melbourne, Florida. Originally from Tomsk, Russia. Connor actually on the floor for Texas. And just like that, it's a seven-point game. And just like right now, we'll see Texas see if they can handle this as easily as they did in that first half. Augustine off the ball. Now he'll run the show. Rush is on Durant, and he's pointing to try to get him the ball one-on-one. -on -one. Abrams. And stolen away by Wright. Here's Wright looking to go coast to coast. Oh, almost got a piece of that one going the other way. Robinson. Oh, with a move. Well, Rick Barnes is going to have to talk things over, Ryan. He has no choice right now. Listen to this elevation of the crowd. The Jayhawks have come alive. Early portion of this second half. 9-2 to open it up since the break. The Texas Longhorns, number 15 in the country. They are yet to attempt a field goal in this second half. Two turnovers for Rick Barnes' squad. One of just three schools to advance to the Sweet 16 in four of the last five years of the NCAA tournament. Duke and UConn, the other two. 56-51, Texas still in front. But Kansas on a run, Durant a three. And it's rebounded by Chalmers. And with the half he put in, you wonder whether his legs are going to be able to carry him to that kind of outside shooting second half. So if you're Texas, you better start thinking about driving the ball towards the hoop a little bit. Chalmers will get it into the hands of Robinson. Plenty of time on the shot clock. The deficit is five. Robinson will try it a three. Count it! Well, it was a wake-up call in halftime for Kansas. They really look sharp right now, sharper than they did in that first half where Texas basically dominated them, got anything they won in the first at the offensive end. James on the block, but a foul call. And Damian James is headed back to the free throw line. And James, one of these guys who just doesn't get enough recognition on this team. But he's a go-to type guy and third alternative down there in terms of on the blocks can really go after it in a smart play just then in terms of trying to get himself at the line and get himself going towards the hoop. Second foul on Khan. Second team foul against Kansas. If you think FEMA is the first to respond when disaster strikes, you've never met David Canther and his volunteers. That's Monday on the CBS Evening News with Katie Curry. Damian James gets the roll on the second attempt. James has been doing a nice job, though, for them scoring, though. Coming in averaging eight points a game, but in double figures, five out of the last seven. So he's been an option and a good one for them. Here's a zone look from Rick Barnes. We'll see how Kansas attacks it. Rush, we got caught up in the air. Well, he was looking for a shot, and it was a little deflection halfway up, and then he went for a pass look. They're really trying to get the ball out of Augustine's hands, obviously, running two at him. Here's Durant, baseline drive, gives it up, actually underneath. A lot of contact, no call. Chalmers the other way. Pull up three. Terrific recognition. Remember, Durant's out front now in this zone. And Chalmers just constantly came down the floor. Look at Augustine penetrating again. Out of bounds. Texas will hold on to it. Kansas is six of seven 
from the field in the second half. Texas has yet to convert on a field goal. Other than James's drive, they really have nothing going at all. That might be a five-second count, too. It's so noisy in here. I didn't hear the whistle. I don't know about you. No, I can't hear you. Yeah, you, <laughs> you got to look for hand signals right now. It's so noisy in here. Official Steve Olsen raising his five. Oh, they really have the crowd right where they want them right now. Let's see what Kansas does. Starting to pick up a little steam for them. Jayhawks with a chance to regain the lead. Right, extra feed to Khan. Right, high floater. Khan doesn't get the roll. Oh, look at right. Julian Wright puts Kansas up by one. First the interior passing and then the relentless effort on the offensive glass. But how about Wright with a great fingertip control? Abrams a three. <laughs> So Kansas had its first lead since 4-3. Short-lived as Abrams nails it from the corner. Right on a kick out. Rush is open. Book it. Rush was only two for five in that first half, but to my eye, he had the confidence of a guy who was five for five. Augustine getting to the hole. Doesn't get the roll. 62-61, Kansas. Good hands by James. Saved by Rush. Oh. That's a three. Air ball. Wright is there. And he lays it in. Rush gives him a smile as if to infer that that wasn't a shot. That was a pass. 14 points. Six rebounds for the sophomore, Julian Rush. A right, young Texas team. It was easier playing when everything's going well. Let's see what they can pull off when it's not going so well here in the second half. Why isn't Durant getting touches? Well, Rush is on him and not really letting him get the touches. But Durant is pretty good at posting up. They should try to find a way to get it to him. And a foul called way outside as Augustine was making his move. A timeout. The Kansas Jayhawks. They are looking for win number 1900 in school history today. Sixty-four, sixty-one, Kansas leading Texas. These Jayhawks are thinking about national championship possibilities this season. You see what's happened for this team the last three years in the NCAA tournament. Back-to-back first-round losses to Bucknell and Bradley. Bill Self in his fourth year as the head coach at Kansas. But we are seeing some of their personality come out in this second half. These kids are fighters. And Bill Self has talked at great length about the depth this team has. And they know how to share the basketball. You can look at it one of two ways. They don't have that one go-to guy, but they have a lot of players that can hurt you. And there's Durant getting involved for Texas. And right off that timeout, so a good decision by Texas to get him involved. 27 for Durant and a foul called against Augustine. Well, the other part about that point with Kansas, too, is the fact that, you know, it really doesn't matter to them, or at least they give the impression that it doesn't matter who's their leading scorer, who's their leading rebounder. They mix that all up, and that's usually the sign of a very good team. Good hands by Durant there. Two-on-one break. Here's Augustine developed into a three-on-one, and James rocks the rim for the Longhorns. Just a little touch of a look-away pass right there by Augustine, directing traffic down the middle of the floor. Tenth assist of the day for DJ Augustine. He has got his fingerprints all over this game. Right, step back, off the window, no. Arthur, the follow doesn't go, and it's rebounded by Hill for Texas. 65-64. Longhorns with the lead. Augustine way outside. Texas leads by one with 13.35 to play in the second half. Durant off the mark. He's put up 27 points. The high man for the Longhorns, 25 in the first half. Here's Rush. Rims out. And knocked outside, controlled by Robinson for Kansas. Texas was 
tremendous in the first half, only to see Kansas come all the way back in the early stages of the second half. And we're in a tight one now with Texas leading by one and a foul call. You well, know, tempo shift is such a big thing, especially on your home floor. And Bill Self kind of recognized, I think, going into the break, that they'd be able to weather this problem that Texas threw at them with Durant getting his 25 in that first half. So they've done a terrific job over this first six minutes or so of just settling themselves down and working their way back in. They spread the floor with Collins. It was 54-42 Texas at the half. More traditional 2-3 zone. Collins, no good. And Rush has got it. Another offensive rebound for Kansas. Yeah, we see Arthur really doing a nice job down deep. Here he goes again. Roman baseline, the freshman Darrell Arthur. Got his hand on the ball on the offensive end to keep it alive and then tracked the ball. As most big guys who are successful, he tracked it, saw a spot on the baseline that was clear. Terrific delivery and finish. Right now, Kansas is out-rebounding Texas by 13 boards, 28 to 15. They got to go to the well, and the well is wearing number 35 on his jersey right here. Here's Durant turning off the mark. Arthur gets it out in a hurry. Nice Lob look. ahead, right. And a two-man game that doesn't work for Kansas. Now Durant's shots right now are being pressed a little bit better defensively by Kansas. In the first half, they really weren't getting close to him. Now the little bit of a pressure defense, finding them quicker. Durant forcing just a little bit, maybe a touch tired. We asked Rick Barnes specifically about coming into this arena and this environment, and he told us, look, we've got a very relaxed group of guys. Yes, they're freshmen, but nothing seems to rattle them. They're fearless. Sometimes I question myself if they might be a little too relaxed, but it's working for us. It has worked, and now this will be a, this is a terrific test for this young team right here because I don't think they've experienced this kind of crowd and wild atmosphere. Kansas up by one. Here's Abrams on the outside Whoa. looking for Hill. He wasn't looking for the ball. Shot clock is down to 10. Mason with a high screen. Abrams lets it fly. Doesn't go for three. Look how fast Kansas is looking to get down the floor. There's Arthur going down and running well. He was open. They missed him. Chalmers steps into it. And he's got it. A three. Great delay break just then, but you must run the floor. So give credit to Arthur for taking defenders with him away from the three-point line. Oh. <laughs> You're not going to get away with that one, Mr. Arthur. 19 points for Chalmers on five of five from long range. It's a good one here in Lawrence, Kansas. CBS Sports College Basketball coverage is sponsored by Buffalo Wild Wings. You have to be here. Lowe's for all your home improvement needs. Lowe's, let's build something together. And by Nissan, who invites you to shift the way you move through the world. 69-65, Kansas leading it. Big 12 action. These two teams going toe-to-toe -to -toe. in the second half. Jimmy, what's been the difference for Kansas? I just think the attitude has been a little different. The intensity level, the sharpness of what they're trying to achieve, moving without the ball and the confidence of shooting the ball is a nice package. But the one thing I will mention with Bill Self at, at the halftime break, he got these guys ready to play. Not to say he didn't challenge at the beginning of this game, but he took them to a different level to begin the second half. They've suffered only four losses this season. Losses to Oral Roberts, DePaul, Texas Tech, and Texas A&M. Bill Self's team is riding a seven-game winning streak. And they lead the all-time series with Texas with a mark of 12-5. and five. The second-half score, Kansas 27, Texas 11. That high screen for Durant. Look who they run the run him out to if he can handle it. Against the freshman Arthur. Off balance. No. And Durant goes down. He's grabbing his left ankle. Kevin Durant remains in the backboard in pain. Arthur gets the easy one on the oh. inside. Durant just went down again, too, Ian. So we'll keep a real close watch on this. He was in traffic when he was trying to get that shot off. It turned out to be an awkward leap. Now, I'm not sure whether it was from the leap that he turned or when he came down, because if you noticed, he didn't really get off the floor well. Yep. Yes, he... Oh, boy, I'll tell you, 
both ankles kind of went on him just then a little bit. Did you notice the first one was the right one, then the left one? Yep. And then he came. It was the left one on the step. And Kevin Durant is going to limp his way off the floor and right. into the locker room. And a lot of class here as he leaves. People giving him a standing ovation down that end of the floor, recognizing just what he brought to the table to this point in this game. But this game has taken a sudden turn with 11 minutes to play. The Longhorn superstar, Kevin Durant, forced to exit with an apparent ankle injury. And at 71-65, Abrams a three. No, Hill, who just checked in for Durant, offensive rebound. Abrams again, and he nails it. And a foul. A.J. Abrams with a chance at a conventional three-point play. I think he ended up holding on to his right ankle. You see that extension just there? That was the one. But now look at his left also. And I mean, it's both of them, but I think most of his attention was going towards the right one initially and then slipped to the left. So. Yeah, see, I thought as he was walking off the floor, his attention was more focused on the left end. Could have been there at the end because he did end up grabbing the left just then. Darnell Jackson has come in for Kansas, replacing Chalmers, who's the high man for the Jayhawks, with 19. And you just hope that it's not the front of the ankle, but the sides. The sides almost work like elastic bands when you play basketball so much. You roll your ankles so frequently that they kind of just come back into space. The ligament's almost like a rubber band would extend and re come right back to its position. Abrams now with 15 points for Texas. Here's Rush in a three-point game. Jackson will get a touch, makes his move on Hill, and he travels. The Darnell Jackson, the Oklahoma City native, called for steps. See, I think one of the tendencies for Texas without Durant on the floor might be for them to be more of a guard-oriented, look-for-the-shot type of team right now. I think with their quickness with Augustine, Abrams, they should make sure they don't sacrifice the long one for the short drive to the basket. Because he's so good at it, he can find ways to get there. Augustine will look to take over. Good smarts. Real good smarts by Augustine. 15 for the freshman point guard. You know, they can probably get an outside shot anytime they want. they got to continue to concentrate on getting it to the goal, getting some shots to the free throw line. There's Robinson. They'll try the inside. Right on a kick out. We are past the halfway point of this second half. Kansas leading by one. Arcing delivery, Julian Wright nails it. Well, he could fill up a stat sheet. Augustine sets and connects. <laughs> so can he. <laughs> Boom over on that stat sheet because he's lining him up also. 17 for Augustine, and he's got 10 assists. And I keep looking out to that door where Durant exit, exited, hoping that it's just a tape job of the ankle for him. Rush. Good look at a three. Well, he looks like a different shooter, even though he had that confidence in the first half. Rush wants the ball. They're really spreading the floor well. It's been a quiet 13 for Brandon Rush. 76-72. Long jumper, Abrams. Doesn't go. And rebound controlled by Jackson. Off the window, Russell Robinson. Kansas wasting no time getting up the floor. Yeah, I'm not so sure Texas wants to go running with them right now without the ranch scoring power on the floor. And a foul called. And it will be Robinson picking it up. Monday, Dave in the audience. Plus, Jack Hanna's animals in a top 10 with Christina Aguilera. That's Monday on The Late Show. Connor Ashley will check in for Texas. That is team foul number six against Kansas. Texas with only three team fouls. 8.45 to play. And that's exactly why Texas has to con continue to consider going towards the basket. Go inside first and then look. Abrams loses it. Chalmers run out. Mason back. Chalmers can't slam it. And a foul called on the arm. Justin Mason getting back in a hurry. Well, part of that makes sense, though, by Mason. Don't give a guy, especially on his home floor, a breakaway dunk. Here's a little bit out of control in the middle of the floor by Abrams. And then Mason comes from the right side to track him down and foul him.
So Chalmers at the free throw line, third foul on Mason. You keep looking over that tunnel area, Jim. I do. I'm just hoping the best for Texas because and Durant. Yeah, because sometimes if you turn that ankle, you can go in there, retape it, and it's not that big a deal. And sometimes if it's not serious, you almost want to come back out and keep playing. Chalmers off the mark on the first attempt, 78% shooter. His father, Ronnie, is KU's director of basketball operations and was his high school coach in Anchorage, Alaska, Bartlett High School. Mario's cousin, Lionel, former Xavier star, playing over in Italy. 20 points for Mario Chalmers. Largest lead of the day at seven for Kansas. Mason on a spin. Jump shot, no. Rebound, fought for, knocked outside. Mason hits the deck. Oh, that's a great play. Just a terrific play, going after the basketball, securing it, looking for an official to get a timeout. Well done. We'll step aside with 8.22 remaining in Lawrence. 79-72 Jayhawks on top of the Longhorns. 79-72 Kansas with the lead. 8.22 to go in this second half. And Kevin Durant during that timeout walking through the tunnel onto the floor and directly to the bench. Mm. You thought maybe he well, would go out there for game action. Don't discount him yet. I mean, he's lacing up the shoes. He's tightening them up. I'm not a betting guy, but I think he's gonna. He's, he's got that competitor's na competitor's nature. I get you know. Give him another minute or so. You may just see him. Here's Augustine. Kick out. Ashley's open. That's a three. Oh, nice work by Jackson down deep. We will hit the eight-minute mark. And here comes Durant for Texas. He'll check in, next whistle. Collins, knock away, Kahn able to retrieve it. Robinson. Collins one-on-one -on -one with Augustine, high screen set by Jackson. Here's Collins on the curl to the rim, no. Kahn, rebound, stick that goes. How'd he put that one in? He's falling away, extends with the one hand. Great work from both ends of the floor defensively with Jackson snagging the defensive rebound and then Kansas going to work up front. Nine for Kahn and a nine-point lead. Nice. Augustine in some trouble. And he takes a timeout. Great double team along the sidelines. Tough place to pull up. It's an 8-0 run. Kevin Durant getting ready to check back in when we come back. Kevin Durant is walking with a noticeable limp. Obviously, we got to see him go up and down the floor, jogging, and then full-out sprint. Seven nineteen to play. 81-72, the number three team in the country, Kansas, leading number 15, Texas, here in Lawrence. Kevin Durant returns after an ankle injury. Mason is off the mark, and it's rebounded by Kahn. They can bring the lead to double figures for the first time today. What an entry! And Durant called for the foul. Just behind Jackson of Kansas. Free throws coming. And, and you're absolutely right. I mean, Durant looks a little slow moving up and down the floor still. Couple of free throws coming up for Kansas when we return. $11. Blanket, $24. Making it all better. Priceless. With PayPass on your MasterCard, just tap and go. Just to recap, Kevin Durant, the high man with 27 points, but forced to leave the game with a twisted left ankle. Got it retaped. He has rejoined his teammates out on the floor 
as we check out the game summary. But when he comes back, Kansas has the 81 to 72 lead and a chance to add to it at the free throw line. Ian Eagle, Jim Spinard will here at courtside here in Lawrence, Kansas. Well, it's a nice script yep. if Kevin Durant in Texas can show that resiliency right. and come from behind. This is a tough place to play. They put up a great show in the first half, but it's been all Kansas in the second half. It has been, and the other thing to look for is defensively, Kansas has really brought it up a notch, but with Durant going up and down the floor, I think the one thing to look for is in the 30 seconds or so that he's been on the floor, we have not seen him go up and down very hard yet, and we haven't really seen him catch the ball and make something happen with it yet. So we'll know in about a minute whether or not that ankle's gonna allow him to go and finish this last seven minutes or not. Darnell Jackson to the free throw line, no good on the first attempt. A 66% shooter. Nickname is D-Block. Big frame, 6'8", 250. And he misses on a pair, rebounded by James for Texas. They run up the floor just casually by Durant. Looks better that trip than it did the last trip down the floor. Texas has their original starting five out on the floor. Augustine, tough shot, fadeaway goes. DJ Augustine. All right, I bet everybody in the building was wondering, all right, let's get Durant involved right here and see how his ankle feels. Nice decision there by Augustine to go away from it. 81-74, Robinson for Kansas. Gives up his dribble. Chalmers, the leading scorer for the Jayhawks with 20. Looking inside, Kahn. Left hand, rims out, and rebounded strong side by James. Great job by James defensively, too. Here's Augustine giving it up. Abrams spot up, doesn't go for three, and Rush rises up for the defensive rebound. Rush down the middle. Oh. A slash! Darnell Jackson rush the rim. One of the things Kansas really looks to utilize both on the fast break in their sets is the lob dunk type play. They look for it. It's not unusual. Durant can't get the three. And it's rebounded by Kahn with 5.42 left. 83-74. They're looking to get Jackson the ball down deep. Rush. Well, no good. <laughs> James go after the ball, huh? Durant has been held. Two points in the second half. And a reach-in foul against Robinson. One of the things Kansas likes to do is go up and down the floor and watch to the left of your look right there. And a nice little finish by Jackson, but push the ball down the floor with your numbers and go upstairs if you need to. You know, in the old days, Ian, that would have been a little bounce pass, two-on-one layup, but now guys can go up to the rim and go right over the defenders. Jackson takes a seat for Kansas. D.J. Augustine, what an all-around effort today. 19 points, 10 assists. Texas has not missed at the line until that free throw. They were 8 of 8. 83-74, we come up on five minutes to play. Entry fee, Arthur turns, Hill! Foul called against Matt Hill. And free throws coming for Darrell Arthur. On both Survivor Tribes, there's fighting between the men and women. Which team will pull together to win a knockdown, drag-out competition? Don't miss a brand new episode of Survivor. Fiji, that's Thursday on CBS. Arthur at the free throw line, considered Texas as he was leaving high school, South Oak Cliff. Texas, Baylor, Arizona, Oklahoma, SMU were all on the board for Arthur, but he chose Kansas. McDonald's All-American added 10 pounds early in the season, averaging 10 and a half points, five rebounds in his freshman year, and a block and a half per game. Yeah, terrific freshman year, and also playing well over the last eight or so, where he's shooting just under 60%. Mason, a three. A great snatch by Durant for the deuce. And how about the quickness to go right back up with it? No hesitation. I mean, it was a split second. His thought process just took him right back to the glass. 29 for Kevin Durant. And Augustine comes up a little gimpy. 
He's grabbing at that left hip area. Oh, uh, Hill just got his feet back in bounds. Good footwork there. I think the fans thought he was out, but I think he reestablished underneath the basket. Augustine lumbering just a little bit. A big possession right here. Team is down eight. Durant driving. Out of bounds. And Durant, he was grabbing at that left okay. ankle again. Yeah, he's, he's limping. Noticeably. Yeah, watch the double team. They try to close in on him. I like the thought process by Durant to get himself going to the hoop. Pretty well defended, though, by Kansas, double teaming him. Eighty-four, seventy-six. Four minutes to play. He spread the ball, spread the floor very well. Both sides of the floor. Inside the arc, rush. No. And Durant able to tip the ball to himself. So the window of opportunity is still there for Texas. Durant's still slow getting down the floor. I one of the things to look for down the stretch is the legs. Shooting starts with your feet, your legs, and see if he can get some elevation. Abrams, wide open look. Too strong. And the rebound ripped down by Wright for Some, Kansas. Somebody better stop him. Oh, uh, good play. Oh, Able to save. Now he stepped out first, actually. They got him. They got him saving that ball right on the line. Texas is just one of ten from three-point range this half. Kansas is trying to deliver the knockout punch. All right, reliability. Well, looks like a package is heading south on 995. It was shipped yesterday. It weighs 11 pounds, and it should arrive by... 8.30 a.m. It's early. So how do I know all that? Well, this is a smart label, and it knows everything about your package. And it's only from UPS. It's not reliability. It's UPS reliability. Oh, sorted in Philly. The madness begins. 65 teams are invited to the big dance. The NCAA Basketball Selection Show, next Sunday on CBS. Look at the game reset. Kansas still has three timeouts remaining. Texas with one. The team fouls. Texas has never beaten Kansas in seven previous trips to Lawrence. And keep in mind, Texas had to play double overtime Wednesday night against Texas A&M. A 98-96 victory for Rick Barnes' squad. They've played in four overtime games this season. Two were multiple. The double overtime against Texas A&M and the triple overtime loss to Oklahoma State. Off the timeout, Augustine. Oh, that's nifty. He finds James for the slam roaming baseline. That's his 11th dish. And they bait everybody to think it's going to be the two-man game of Augustine and Durant, and then they slide it, and he does a terrific job of reading the floor. Three minutes to play, six-point differential. Nice right, swept away. In the corner, Durant's got it for Texas. Oh, he's got, like, vacuum cleaner hands, too. The ball's around him. He just sucks it right in. Here's Mason. Abrams, pump and a jumper. No good. Kept alive. Texas controls it. Abrams, offensive foul. He tried to do a little too much against the bigger body, Julian Wright. Yeah, his jumper's been a little flat the last couple of trips down the floor, and you're absolutely right here. Wright steps out, good position. Even though he tries to squeeze around him, there wasn't enough room, and just a little bit of that right arm coming up, getting him in trouble. 2.38 left. Kansas 84, Texas 78. Kevin Durant clearly not 100% after twisting his left ankle. 29 points for Durant. This is where they're willing to get the extra touches. Robinson, floater doesn't go. Long rebound, the leak out to Augustine. They're running. Finds Abrams. So that's just an example of Abrams. That's a mistake on Abrams at first. Augustine on the sideline, but Abrams running the floor. He wanted that three. They had a two-on-one break. You got to go back to the old fundamentals and get a layup first rather than the three. And a timeout taken. 2-12 left. It's a six-point game in Lawrence. 
stuck in the office, can't get to the TV, then sign up for NCAA March Madness On Demand and watch the men's tournament online. Get your free VIP pass right now at NCAAsports.com slash MMOD. Each team with seven fouls. Texas still has the one timeout remaining, Kansas with two. Kevin Durant is playing through the pain right now. But this is not the same Kevin Durant that we saw in the first half. No, and it is the second half. Obviously, after that first half of where he had 25, he expended a lot of energy. And now playing through the problem with the ankle. We'll watch down the last two minutes here to see. He's still hobbling, though, and he really has to push off on that. Mm -hmm. Robinson gives it up to Chalmers. Under two minutes to play. Oh, nice high screen by Arthur. Chalmers, Robinson, perfectly executed the rush on the alley-oop. Well, it ends with the alley-oop, but it starts with a terrific high screen, and that's what the bench is looking at Arthur for. Man, did he ever nail the uh, defender on that one. 15 for Rush. Durant taken away. Robinson picks his pocket. Numbers if they hurry, but they'll back it out. Use some clock. Yeah, up this spread right now that Texas really has to come out. Yep, that's what you have to do. You have to too much time with a three-possession game like this. Well, watch this high screen. Bang. Now you have a guard that can make a decision with a crossover, flip it upstairs, and finish it off. May not have been the knockout punch, but boy, it's pretty close. 118 left. 86-78. Kansas can extend to a 10-point lead. Keep in mind, Chalmers came to Lawrence as a point guard, and he has morphed into a hybrid, more of a two-guard. Robinson, no good. And Texas still has a chance. Augustine inside, no. James is there, and he cleans up the loose change. Six-point game, 108 to play. Last timeout taken by Texas. We'll come back with the finish at Allen Fieldhouse. Coming up next, Aaron Aflalo and the UCLA Bruins take on the Washington Huskies. Then, Greg Oden and the top-ranked team in the country, Ohio State, visits Michigan right here on the home of the NTA Men's Basketball Championship, CBS Sports. Well, Jimmy, there's no doubt there's a chance that you could see both of these teams deep into the month of March, depending upon their respective draws. Kansas is poised to get a number one seed in the NCAA tournament. And Texas, despite their youth and inexperience, will be a very tough out for somebody come NCAA time. First half, they put up 54 points. But Kansas didn't panic. And they came out with a renewed energy to start that second half. They've outscored Texas by 18 since the break. And one of the reasons why you can expect Rick Barnes's team and also Bill Self's team to advance, as you mentioned, and possibly go deep, is because of games like this. Whether you win or lose this type of game, there's a great carryover effect. Mason going for the steal, able to get his hands on it. And then took a fall, appears to be okay. This is always one of those tough times in the uh, clock management where you have 107 left with a six-point lead or you're down six. Texas will go for that steal. The question becomes whether you foul or not. I like the foul here just because you extend the game. They get it in. Rush. They're trying to foul, but they just can't reach anybody. Play a game of keep away here, and it's working. Rush. Oh, Abrams trying to give that one. And finally, a foul is called with 52 seconds left. Well, there were a couple of times Bill Self's team thought they were going to get fouled just then. Mm -hmm. And today, Chevrolet players of the game, D.J. Augustine for Texas, Julian Wright for Kansas. In recognition of their determination and outstanding play, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. America's brand supports America's best. Chevy. An American Revolution. Chalmers rims in on the free throw. He's got 21. He's a playmaker. 
And Rick Barnes, the six-game winning streak on the line, a piece of the Big 12 regular season title. But with a win here, Kansas takes it outright. And they'll have the number one seed for the Big 12 tournament coming up in Oklahoma City next week. Mason at three. Rainbow delivery, no. Oh, they have the foul. Don't have any choice. There you go. Three possession game right now, though. 37.5 left. Uh, fans a little nervous still, Ian, but they recognize right now what these two free throw potentially these two free throws mean. A month ago, Texas suffered back-to-back -back losses to Kansas State and Texas A&M. They fell out of the top 25, and that's when we found out about this Longhorns team and the resiliency that Rick Barnes has discussed. The freshmen came together and have put together a run. Playing in the regular season finale with a chance to win part of the conference title. J.D. Lewis has come on for Texas. But Kansas, too tough at home. The number three team in the country. Their top five scorers are sophomores and freshmen. This is a young team as well. Durant and a tie-up. Longhorns will retain it with 28.5. Very good collapse just then down the stretch by Kansas. Not to give up the easy bucket, but also avoid the foul. This is a rested Kansas team. They have not played since Monday night. Twenty-eight point five on the clock. Eighty-eight to eighty. Jayhawks. Durant a three. Count it. Wow. No timeouts remaining. He's got thirty-two. Eighty-eight. Eighty-three. Might have been a push off just then to get that ball. It was a turnover with 25.4. And Texas still alive. Trailing by five with the ball. So now Augustine will toss it in for the Longhorns. And a foul called, so a one and one. For Texas. The ball's not in play as of yet. You see the push off. Chalmers got called on it as Abrams hit the deck. He is one of one at the free throw line. But the way Texas has played in overtime games this year, <laughs> nothing would surprise me. Yeah. Was that ball considered in play? Is the I issue. Bill Self is down there looking at the call. Abrams standing at the free throw line. The foul has been given, and a one and one. And Bill Self wants an explanation. The ball was tossed in. Bill Self might be saying, hey, the ball wasn't even in play yet. Let's see. Oh, you might be right. Yeah, no, it's before it goes in play. That's bang, bang. But. I believe they're going to get the ball out of bounds eventually. And that's what Bill Self has been arguing, the fact that it's a push-off, it's an offensive foul, so they should get the ball underneath the basket where it looks like they're going to go. I like the fact that the player walks to the line. 25.4, so they will trigger in. Three. Abrams, he nails it. It's a two-point game. 23 seconds left. They get it into right, and a foul called. And Julian Wright is going to the free throw line. Somehow, some way, Texas has given themselves a puncher's chance. Now you watch this quick catch and go. He's been a little flat on his shots from the left-hand side of the court, but not on that strip right there. Take the square, you stay away from a defender's perspective, and nothing but nylon there to drop that one through. And you got a 64% free throw shooter at the line. 
first one is good. 89-86, this would make it a two possession game for Kansas. Julian Wright, the sophomore, short. You don't need a three right now, and Augustine probably understands that as well as anybody. Augustine gives it up. This is for the tie. No good, Mason. Augustine rebound. Pump, lead, oh, rejected by Wright. They got a foul in a hurry. They're spreading the court pretty well, though. Oh, what a sequence. 5.9 left. Well, I tell you, both guys, Augustine and Wright, did exactly what they were supposed to do just then, even though Augustine had a little bit more time on the clock to make a decision. But he looks to jump into the first defender, and where does Wright come from? But out of vision, look at him coming from behind, and he never sees him. A terrific recovery by Wright to make a stopper of a defensive play. And I think the first thought from Augustine is that he's going to get contact from Chalmers right. and get to the line that, for three free throws. Exactly. That's why he was jumping in towards from left to right. Robinson, though, needs this one. And a timeout with 5.9 left on the clock. Where did Julian Wright come from? The defensive play of the game, maybe to preserve a win. Eighty nine eighty six with five point nine left possession arrow favors Kansas. They have one free throw left to make this a four point Jayhawk lead. And earlier in the week we talked about the Oklahoma game for Kansas where they struggled in the second half. It was a close game but they came back with a nine four sprint at the end if you will to give themselves that win. But boy the gentleman right there is going to take a couple of deep breaths. So here it is, Russell Robinson at the free throw line, the junior. A 66% shooter with a chance to make it a four-point game. He missed on his first attempt. Bill Self takes the timeout. And watch if he does miss it to get the ball to Augustine, run down the floor with Durant and Abrams flaring. He nails it. 90 to 86. Four seconds left. Augustine with three. Three-pointer doesn't go, and that's it. But Kansas Jayhawks win their 1900th game in school history, and they take the Big 12 regular season championship. For Jim Spinarco, the rest of our crew, this is Ian Eagle. UCLA and Washington is coming up game two of our triple header. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the men's NCAA Basketball Championship.